Are you confused about which type of B12 is best for you? Are you wondering which form of B12 is best? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at the different types of B12, different ways to take B12, and which one might be best for you based on different scenarios you have going on. We'll look at genetics, some different signs and symptoms that can point you in the right direction on which form of B12 is best. If you're interested in these topics and things like this and wanna see more videos like it, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like it. All right, well, let's look at which form of B12 is best. So which form of B12 is best? Well, we're gonna look at different routes of administration and different types of B12. Which form of B12 is best for you is really gonna depend on certain circumstances, but there are some types of B12 that you probably don't wanna take at all. And we'll look at that. But basically when it comes to the different types of B12, it really comes down to which molecules are attached to the cobalamin molecule. So B12 is known as cobalamin, and it could be methylcobalamin, cyanocobalamin, hydroxylcobalamin, or adenosylcobalamin. So each of those things on the front of the cobalamin are really the functional group. And some of those molecules, like the cyano, stands for a cyanide, and the hydroxyl stands for a hydroxyl group. Those two molecules are not really adding much value to the physiology of your body. Actually, the cyanide, you probably don't want to take it at all because, well, it's cyanide and that's poisonous to our mitochondria and just not good for us so in a pinch it will help uh, if you're really really low on a vitamin b12 if no other sources are available but generally not recommended to put cyanide in your body no matter how small it is so those two are not necessarily that functional so you you know probably are not going to get as much benefit of them uh, now when uh, it comes to methyl cobalamin and adenosyl cobalamin, those have different uses. So the methyl cobalamin has a methyl group on it. So if you do have genetic issues with recycling B12, such as the MTRR or even MTHFR or MTR, you may need more vitamin B12 in the form of methyl B12 to keep those enzymes functioning at their normal capacity. So that's one genetic reasons why you might need it. Also, if you find maybe you have a, a high home homocysteine or elevated methylmalonic acid. Those are two other reasons why you might want to use that form. Now, in the case of methylmalonic acid, what's used for the methylmalonic acid uh, test shows elevated when you have low B12 levels, and it's a very sensitive way to test for B12, but that molecule goes up when there's a lack of adenosylcobalamin, which is used for fatty acid and myelin sheath production, which is important for your nerves. So if you are having a lot of nerve issues, you may want to use the adenosyl form. Problem is that doesn't come in injectable forms. So there's limited uh, sources of adenosyl cobalamin. I will put a link to one that you can take by mouth uh, if you want to check that out. Um, adenosyl cobalamin is used more for uh, the nerve conduction and myelin sheath. If you have issues with methylmalonyl-CoA uh, genetically, you may need more of this adenosyl cobalamin. So those are two of the best forms you can get because the adenosyl seal does not come in the injectable form, you may want to use the methylcobalamin instead. A lot of times the hydroxyl cobalamin, you can use that one as well, which is a good substitute instead of the cyanocobalamin. Uh, the main routes of administration for B12, um, which you may be interested in, are swallowing uh, sublingual, which means it dissolves in your mouth, and then injectable or IV. So we talked about the different types that are available through injectable and IV, and all the types are available available to swallow, and I believe some sublingual as well. The best way that you're going to get your B12 is when you do it as an injection or IV, but of course that's not you know, freely available to everyone. So the next best option is sublingual or under the tongue. Problem is uh, when you swallow the B12, some people don't have the ability to absorb it, which is why you're deficient to begin with. And then that leads to, you know, you're swallowing it and then you think it doesn't work. All right, that should help answer the question, which form of B12 is best? Now, I did mention a few different scenarios, genetic scenarios that may make you need one version of B12 over the other. Uh, make sure you talk to your doctor if you have questions about that because 
there are lots of different things to consider with that. Clearly, if you're just deficient, you need more B12. A lot of these different forms will work, but if you want specifics, uh, you may want to ask your doctor. Uh, if you do have questions for me on this topic or other topics related to B12 or other health issues, drop it in the comments section. I'll be happy to try and answer to the best of my ability, or I may do a separate video on that topic. So thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.